let us look to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for enabling us to worship you yet again. Even as we spend some time in your mighty presence this day, be with us, bless us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn today is Morning Has Broken. Morning has broken like the first morning. Black God has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for them springing fresh from the world. Sweet the rain's new fall, sunlit from heaven, like the first dew fall on the first grass. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden, sprung in completeness where his feet pass. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning, born of the one light, hidden so plain. Praise with elation, praise every morning, God's recreation of the new day. We hear from the psalm, Psalm 15. Today's psalm is taken from Psalm 15. O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? He who walks blamelessly and does what is right and speaks truth in his heart, who does not slander with his tongue and does no evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a wild person is despised, but who honours those who fear the Lord, who swears to his own heart and does not change, who does not put out his money at interest and does not take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The reading for today's meditation is from Second Corinthians. Chapter 8, verses 1 to 15. Today's New Testament reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 15. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, the abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify and beyond their means of their own free will, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this, not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then by the will of God to us. Accordingly, we urge Titus that as he had started, so he should complete among you this act of grace. But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in our love for you, See that you excel in this act of grace also. I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. And in this matter I give my judgment. This benefits you, who a year ago started not only to do this work, but also to decide to do it. So now finish doing it as well so that your readiness in desiring it may be matched by a completing it out of what you have. For, it is the, for if the readiness is there, it is acceptable according to what a person has, not according to what he does not have. I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but that as a matter of fairness. Your abundance at the present time should supply their need, so that their abundance may supply your need. 
that there may be fairness. As it is written, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. Here ends the reading. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you because you showed us the epitome of giving by sending your Son for our salvation. Even as we meditate on the joy of giving, bless us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Friends, today we meditate on the joy of giving not counting the cost. The story that Paul writes to the Corinthian church is about the giving of the Macedonians at a time of great famine and need. There are four words that I would want to draw your attention to for our meditation today as we meditate on our own giving. The first word is giving joyfully. The Macedonian church saw the need, the pain, the agony, the suffering, and they decided they would give. In verse 2, Paul uses four phrases to tell us of their joyful giving. They gave amidst severe affliction. It was not bounty. It was not joy. It was not a situation very different from the suffering people. Even the Macedonians went through afflictions. Yet, their own afflictions did not stop them from giving. The second phrase that Paul uses in this verse is they gave with abundant joy. Giving was not a burden for them. Giving was not a sad situation for them. There was no sorrow in giving. They gave with joy as if they were giving unto God. Third, in that particular verse, Paul says, they gave from their extreme poverty. Friends, sometimes people are hesitant to give even in their fullness, even in their richness. But here, the people of Macedonia were giving in extreme poverty. And the last phrase that we read in verse 2 is, Overflowing generosity. Overflowing generosity. The beauty of giving is joyful giving. I always think about our four parents. When I look at the church compound in which that I grew up, if we walk into the Elemus compound, despite all that is happening around us, just take a look. We enter and on that one side, we have the child welfare complex. I remember the huge playground, the stone school, and the days in which we played there. And when they decided to build, we were told by the church leadership then, we are going to build a commercial building here. So that the income that would come from that building will be used for the care and support for the suffering children in the years to come. The child welfare complex. The next is a school building. Education is the greatest gift we could offer to the poor. The school for ordinary children around us. The next, we have the embroidery center. Poor women from villages who were excellent in stitching and embroidery work, came together to do embroidery. And that was a hit marketing item. We then have 
the Balika Mandiram and the Pratyasha home. Children who are denied the privilege of a happy home. Up to class 10 in the Balika Mandiram. And after that, as long as they want to study in Pratyasha, people across the world supporting them. We then have hostels for safe stay of women, students and working. And then the earlier polio home, which is now the center for the rehabilitation of the disabled, where we have institutional-based care, community-based care, therapies, special schools and whatnot. We have also the Women Resource Center, the Dalit Resource Center, all, all these institutions among several others were testimonies for the joyful giving of our parents from within their poverty, from within their afflictions. They always wanted to give, give joyfully. New generations, we are challenged to give, not counting the cost, so that others may have life. There is one life, very precious, eternally precious, and that life cannot be wasted in negativity. The second important thought that Paul writes to the Corinthian church is that they voluntarily gave. According to their means, they gave voluntarily. Giving is not because somebody else compels us to do. Giving is not to show the world that we are people who give. Giving is something that comes from the heart. Giving is the very nature of the Christian. Giving is the very essence of Christian existence. And that's, where, that's why Paul writes, they give, they gave according to their means, not below their means. But the testimony of Paul to the giving of the Macedonians is that they gave beyond their means. When we look back and see the giving of our parents, of our poor parents, the building of the kingdom of God, the resources that they pulled in for the sake of the other. When we count it, we realize that they gave not because they were rich. They gave in their poverty. They voluntarily gave. They gave beyond their means, giving, not counting the cost. Friends, we have traveled through the toughest phase of a pandemic. Global mission was affected in several ways, but through it all, through it all, we realized one important thing. Leading a major mission movement, I can strongly testify that we never ever had resource crunch. When there was need, resources were available and we were called to be channels of resourcing people in need. People gave, gave according to their means and gave excess. And we today praise the Lord for the same. Thirdly, Paul writes about prayerful giving. Giving was a spiritual activity. And that's why Paul writes, they gave themselves to God first and then gave to us so that the people in need could be helped. Giving comes out of our giving ourselves to God. And once we give ourselves to God and allow God to take reign in our lives, then what Jesus says becomes very meaningful in our lives. The little you do to the least of these, you do it unto me. Every act of giving, every act of wiping the tear of the other is not an activity for salvation. 
but instead it is an activity that manifests forth the salvation that Christ has brought in you. It is the love of Christ that constraineth us, that compels us to give, give beyond our measure. They gave themselves to God and then to us. Prayerful giving. And finally, Paul writes about affectionate giving. They excelled and Paul testifies to the people in Corinth that yes, you did excel in your faith. Yes, you did excel in your speech. Yes, you did excel in your desire, in your fire for the gospel, in your eagerness. Yes, you excel in love. And how does that excelling in love practically manifest itself? Paul tells them, the excelling in love practically manifests itself in giving, excel in generosity, excel in giving. Friends, the pandemic, the war, the crisis the world over, there are several people in deep distress. We are called to have a heart of abandoned, overflowing generosity as we live out our Christian faith. Four words we are reminded today as a mirror to look at our giving. Do we joyfully give? Do we voluntarily give? Do we give prayerfully? Do we give in love, affectionately give? Let's pray. Gracious Lord, as we celebrate our Christian life, as a celebration of the salvation we experience because you gave your only begotten Son for our sake and for the redemption of humanity, we pray that you would help us understand the essence of giving, Giving, not counting the cost. Giving joyfully. Giving voluntarily. O Lord, help us understand the core of giving. To excel in giving. Prayerfully giving and affectionately giving. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn today is a call. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus.
Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you now and forevermore. Amen.